So in this video, we're going to show you how we make our bow ties. Hello everyone, my name is Phil, and welcome to Miranda Classic Ties. So in today's video, we're going to show you how we make our bow ties. Now, this bow tie here is a reversible bow tie. You can actually find this on our Etsy account, and I'll put links to that down below if you're interested in that. But today we're going to make a bow tie from a really interesting material. Now, this material that we're going to make it from is one that I actually found at one of our local fabric stores, and it's a corduroy. So let's look at the material that we're working with. So here's the material that we're working with today. And it's store-bought today, so it's not a repurposed fabric, but I have found corduroy shirts similar to uh, this with really interesting patterns. So this one is just a nice uh, floral, very fine corduroy. It's got a little bit of stretch to it, but I think this would be an awesome uh, selection for fall bow ties. So what I'm going to do with this is make probably a few bow ties, uh, a pocket square, and a lapel pin, maybe a bunch of lapel pins from this material. So as you see on the back of it, there's no pattern on the back, and it's not too thick. So I think this will really make a nice, um, a nice medium weight bow tie because we're going to need to put a backing on it. Uh, actually, with this we don't, we probably don't have to, but I like to put the stabilizing backing on here because it gives it some structure. So I like the bow ties to have that nice structure to it and not to be floppy. So let's get started with this. So now here is the fusible uh, lining that I use. So this you can purchase on Amazon. If you just type that into Amazon and I'll have some links down below to this as well. And this is just a fine to medium weight fusible inner lining. Well, not really inner lining, but a uh, fusible backing that we're going to use for the uh, bow tie to give it some structure. And you really only need to use this on one side of the bow tie. You'll see what I mean in a second. So what I do is I will unravel just a little bit here. Now I have my template. Now I use this template that I just made from some poster board and I took a bow tie that I already have and basically traced it out. So if you want to make a bow tie, uh, then use an existing bow tie that you have and trace it out or just come up with your own design. Um, this one is pretty used. I use this one a lot. And once this gets a little bit raggedy, then I'll make a new one. So the design will change just slightly uh, over time. Sometimes I'll make them a little bit smaller, a little bit narrower, sometimes a little bit longer. But generally, I like to stay with this size. And as you'll see with this bow tie here, this one was made from this template here. So I think this is a perfect size for bow ties. I know it's just my personal preference, but I like this size. Not too big, not too large, and depending on how you tie it, you can make it a little bit extended, a little bit of a bigger bow tie, or it will also end up to be a smaller size bow tie. It all depends on how you desire to tie the bow tie. So let's start with this. So what I do is I put it up to the corners here, and make sure that I have roughly half an inch, quarter of an inch, all the way around. You're going to have more space here, which is not a problem. But I'll put it to about a quarter of an inch at the corner here. And I will just simply trace this out. Let me start with the bow section first. Make sure that that's good. Make sure to keep pressure on this because it'll want to move. There. So now you have your rough tracing on 
the backing here. Now this bow tie end is, let's see, it's about 19 and a half inches from tip to tail. And at the tail here, I just do a little diamond point and you're going to see why I do that when I sew it uh, onto the other end. So you're gonna need two of these. So what I do is I'll simply flip it and trace out the other side. There we go. So I'll take my cutters and just do a quick cut of this material. Put the rest away. Now you'll see this is what I'm going to use to fuse to the back of the material. Now I do this for all the bow ties if they're cotton, if they're a thicker material, I do the same thing. So now all you need to do is line this up on the back of the fabric. So let's get this fabric here and do that. And I'm going to do this on the bias. So we have it at a 45 degree angle. And I'll iron this, I'll press it to get out any of these wrinkles. And you're going to iron this right onto the back here. So let's do that. All right, so now we're going to iron out. So let me just put this aside. And I'm going to just iron out a few of these little creases and wrinkles. Now you don't have to, you don't have to iron this on the bias if you don't need to. You can actually do it um, so that the pattern goes straight across like so to use up the material uh, efficiently. But in this case, I want the corduroy pattern to go diagonal, a 45 degree angle across the bow tie. It just gives it a nicer look. And I'll probably make another bow tie uh, with it going straight like this. With bow ties, you have the freedom to do that. With neckties, not so much. So now I just use a tea cloth, just a light tea cloth that you can, you can purchase anywhere at Walmart. Again, I'll have links down below for those, but just place the tea cloth over it because you don't want to burn anything, which you really shouldn't because you're going to go light, but just slowly, and you can put the steam on here. That's okay. Just slowly press along and you're basically melting those little tiny, tiny glue dots of the fusible interfacing to the back of the fabric. And just check it to make sure that it's actually sticking. So it looks pretty good. And you don't want to overdo it with the iron. Just heat it up enough so that it fuses. Sometimes if you heat it up too much, it will kind of scorch the material a little bit and scorch the inner lining or the interfacing. And it might shrink up just a little bit. That looks good. Everything looks fused together. And you'll notice when you get up close, the edges here, I'm not too worried about because these will be cut away. But if the rest of it is fused, that's what you want. You'll see those little dots disappear. It's kind of hard to catch on camera, but you can kind of see these little white dots right there. That's the little glue bits that will actually melt and fuse the material together. If you did it wrong, you can just peel it off and start over again. So this looks good. So let's cut the material out and start to construct the bow ties. Okay, so back at the table, 
So what I do is I cut along the interfacing. So this material you can use later. Now you have one side of the bow tie. Now an easy way to cut the other side. Just jump down. And of course you want to flip this material. And now you place it over here because of course here these two sides are going to be sewn together. You're going to follow along this line and what we're going to do is leave a little opening here so just make sure to draw in here. You're going to see what these are for when we start to sew. So let's line up the material and we can cut it out. Don't worry about it being exact, it doesn't need to be. So let's put this material aside. And you don't need to have an interfacing for this side. One side here is sufficient and you wanna follow this guide when you're sewing anyway, so you don't need to have interfacing on this side. So I'm just gonna press this really quickly because there's a couple of little wrinkles in here that I want straightened out and we'll be right. After a quick press, let's line up this material again just to make sure that everything is looking good. Make sure you just have enough material all around the edges, like so. Now, if you want, you can pin it. Don't use a lot of pins. I pin right in the center here, like that, to keep that in place. And just one at the tail, right in the middle, like that. That's all I do for pins. That's all you need. Don't overdo it with pinning. It just gets annoying when you're trying to sew. So I'll flip it over here and just pin, make sure it's straight. I just moved it a little bit. Make sure it's pinned there and pinned here. And that's it, four pins, that's all you need. So make sure everything is laying nice and flat. You don't want any wrinkles in here when you're sewing. And I'm going to cut it right down the middle. So if you see here, I'm going to cut with the cutters right down here and stay along this line all the way down. And then of course, as it gets to here, I'll shift over and cut all the way down. So I'll show you what I mean. So you're leaving about a quarter inch, quarter inch from your marking here. And just cut all the way down, follow the tail here and cut about the center now. And then it shifts over to leave about a quarter inch on the other side. So now you end up with about a quarter inch on either side of material, which is fine. And it's okay to have extra material here to work with. You don't have to cut out the shape of the bow tie. Just do a rough estimate here. Now you have your two sections ready to sew out. So we're going to follow this line here on the sewing machine. So let's do that. Okay, so now at the sewing machine, I just have white thread in here. And looking at the dark material, 
I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. You can switch over to a black thread or a thread that matches this, but you're really not going to see it that much. So I'm not too worried about trying to match up the thread to every single color. Usually I'll stay with black thread for dark materials, white thread for light materials, but this has some white and some lighter colors in here, so I'm really not too worried about it. Now what I do is remember these little marks that I made. You see that? What I'm going to do is start on this edge here and just follow this line. I'm going to start the needle here and follow this line to here and work all the way, work all the way around the whole the whole section here and just follow that line all the way back around until I get back to here and then go up here and end the needle there. So this is going to leave a gap right here. So this we're not going to sew. If you can see that there's going to be a big gap here because we need to pull all this material through here. It doesn't have to be necessarily that large. It doesn't need to be any bigger than that. It can maybe even be a little bit smaller, but about an inch and a half is what I usually choose. And then when the bow tie is all sewn and, and pressed, then we hand sew this with a hidden stitch. So let's sew this whole thing up again. Make sure that everything is lined up. So now I'll drop the needle here and that'll be my starting point. And I have the pin here and I'll take that out as I start to sew. And with the settings, I keep them about here. So about three millimeters uh, for this, the length of the stitch. And this doesn't matter because we're just, just using a straight stitch and whatever straight stitch you have here, that's going to be centered right here. So you're going to follow this line on the center of your foot or however you like to do it. So let's sew this. And at this point, I like to take all the needles out because sometimes the material just gathers a little bit. And that's why you want plenty of material around these edges. You don't want to limit yourself by cutting, uh, pre-cutting already a quarter inch from that line. So leave plenty of material here because you might need to adjust as you go along. And slow down just a little bit as you go around these curves, but don't do but don't go too slow. And if you're not on the line perfectly, don't worry. Bow ties are not made perfectly symmetrical all the time. And there you go. The whole thing is sewn. You notice that 
With thicker materials, it might uh, it might gather a little bit, but just pull it, stretch it, adjust it as you need to. So there's the one half. Let's do the other. Now you'll notice it's not perfectly on the line. Again, don't worry about that. Every bow tie is going to be a little bit different. Even here, I went over just a little. Not a problem. Every bow tie is going to be a little bit different. And when you pull it through and press it, it's going to look great. They don't have to match up perfectly. All right, let's cut these out. So now we have everything sewn. Make sure everything is laying flat. If you need to stretch it out and adjust it, not a problem. Don't worry if it puckers here a little bit. Sometimes the material just does that. So let's cut this material out. And you're going to see at the tips here, I do about an eighth of an inch. So you'll notice at the tips here, I do an eighth of an inch here. And you're going to see how I cut it. This is just for demonstration purposes. I usually cut a straight line all the way down. But this is the tail. So about an eighth of an inch at the top here. And at the corners here, make sure that they're that they're pretty make sure that they're pretty uh close to the stitch. Because when you go to poke those corners out. You don't want any extra material in there. So now a quarter inch all along that, that seam all the way down. So let's continue cutting it. Okay, so now here is everything cut out. So as you see, a quarter inch from that stitch all the way out, all the way to the tip here, or to the, the uh, tip of the bow tie. And you notice the corners, I snipped at a 45 degree angle here. And again, you don't want a lot of buildup of material there. So snip close to those edges about an eighth of an inch, or sometimes even a little bit less, between a sixteenth of an inch and an eighth. Now what I'm going to do is cut little lines in here because these are curved edges. So you're going to, so you're going to cut little lines in here, and I'll show you. I use that. Uh, I use the cutters here to do it. You can also use the scissors. So I start right where it starts to curve, here. And I do about every three quarters of an inch to an inch or so. And I will snip just a little bit of material like this. So I'll snip just a little bit of material about an eighth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch close to that stitch like so. And I'll do that every half inch to a full inch starting here where it starts to curve. That way when the material is pulled through and pressed, you won't have a buildup of material and it won't wrinkle all weird. What the material will do is overlap so that it can lay flat. So let's do that. 
I'm going to use the roller cutters here and just gently roll right up to that edge. And you don't need to go any further around here. I just start the middle of the bow tie and go around this curved edge. Just make sure you're not cutting your stitches. After you do this for a while, you can tell how much you need to cut. So do that all around these curved edges. All right, now let's show you how we pull the material through. So I like to use a nice rounded chopstick. So make sure that it's rounded and smooth. If you need to take some sandpaper to smooth it out, then you can do that. But make sure that the chopstick is nice and smooth. It really does not want to focus on this chopstick. So a rounded chopstick, nice and smooth, and use a little pointed end here. Where I start is the tail. Now, make sure to not separate the fused uh, backing on the material here. But what I'll do is I'll pinch and I'll pinch the material on this end, and I create a little pocket. And then with my thumb, my two thumbs, I'll push the material in. So now it starts to look like this. So you've pushed that little end of the tail into itself. Now all you need to do is gently, don't force this too much, but gently start to guide the material within itself. So it's flipping it inside out. And you'll feel it when it starts to flip inside out nicely and glide along the material. You can kind of use that as a base. And now you'll see that the material will start to push through. Now, remember that little gap that we left open? Here's where you push the material through. Yeah.